We have Monday Night Football, Coats and the Panthers. Probably the rainiest game we've had all season, huh? Yeah. At least it's definitely the rainiest one I saw. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, with this rain comes a lot of turnovers. It's just kind of part of the thing with the NFL. And in a way, like, I think it's almost better as like an outsider fan to watch a game like that because then you don't have to risk your team doing those turnovers, but it definitely makes the game more interesting as like, I guess as a somebody watching it that's not really a fan of either one, just kind of want to just, uh, sit down and just watch a good game happen and unfold. And it, uh, it generally guarantees you're going to see a little bit more old school football because you're going to see a lot more running and passing. Yeah. And it it kind of it changes the whole game. It's it's always interesting when it's Cornell rain, you know. So um, actually, it was a boring game though most of the night. Yeah, it kind of was. And uh, you know, it, here's the thing: where do you want to go with uh, between Cam Newton and Andrew Luck? Because both did have turnovers. Uh, I guess, arguably, Luck had the most crucial one of the entire game. But Cam Newton had sure. three himself. And right. still comes up with the win. You also come from a team that you're up 17 points in the fourth quarter. And you allowed uh, for the Colts to come and tie it. Now... There's been a lot of talk, uh, you know, since Monday night of maybe why uh, this was allowed. And I, I do agree with this. And I really truly believe is that, uh, you know, it's it's no question that Andrew Luck is in a slump this year. I mean, going back to our previous recordings of the previous weeks, I think you and I have been saying this for a long time. <laughs> and yeah. I, I really think that Andrew Luck's... Uh, big I guess losing streak is he's having a really bad mental blockage um uh, one of the the craziest things I heard during the game was uh I think it was after luck threw his that last interception in overtime when he was standing by himself uh he had no coaches by him no teammates by him he's just standing there and the announcer goes, and that's one of the loneliest feelings you could ever take as a quarterback. Because, it, you know, and I, I can't imagine that Andrew Luck is a type of guy where, you know, after a play like that happens and the offensive coordinator comes and says, you know, like, oh, well, you know, this is what happened. This is what we can work on where he's going to be like, oh, get the fuck out of my face. I don't want to hear Like, I, right. I don't see Luck being that guy. Right. I think it just was to a point where, uh, the entire Colts team just didn't know what to say to him. And he just has to sit there and deal with it. You know what, though? Um, at the same time, luck is the reason the game was even close. Right. And that's the so, other side of the spectrum that I was going to get at, is right. with this huge mental blockage that he's been dealing with, I think when the fourth quarter came out, the, someone just came up to him and said, look, don't overthink it. Don't hold on to the ball too long. Don't try to go for these deep passes. Just go out there and just go with your gut feeling. And I think when he just kind of like almost went to autopilot mode in a way, like where you just go out there, don't even think, just snap the ball and throw. And he was making amazing throws at that point. And I think in the rain, <laughs> in the rain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that's kind of what it's coming down to. I think luck needs to just go into this game and he's got to stop overthinking it. He's got to stop holding on to the ball for more than five seconds, looking for this deep threat. And he just got to snap the ball, throw it. You know, if your first target's right there and you see an opening, go. You know, and sometimes you're going to throw these interceptions, but hell, you're throwing these interceptions anyway. Hey, uh, in the uh, Saints game, uh, Luck was noticeably getting rid of the ball a lot quicker than he had been. Which obviously, it didn't work out. Yeah. But. Uh, and even in the game before that, I've noticed though, the throughout the season he tends to have a better second half than first half. Yes, I don't yes, know, he does. Figuring out defenses at halftime, you know, as the game goes on, or if they're like get, they're getting these leads, and so they're like kind of easing up. I mean, the Panthers' defense outside of that fourth quarter has looked like probably the second or third best defense in the NFL. Oh, definitely. So it was really impressive to see him do that. And it was probably some combination of 
them feeling secure and then luck just finally getting into a rhythm. Yeah. But I'm I'm definitely curious as to how he's gonna turn out the rest of the season. Uh, actually playing Denver, right? I think this yes, up is. yes, they are. So that's gonna be a rough game. But <laughs> the funny thing is they're still in first place. Right. Yeah. And you know, it. I think that's that's gonna contribute to a lot. Not only does Luck have this mental blockage, but man, he's got a lot of weight on his shoulders. Because think about it they're tied to win the division. So they're not even like on this at least two game ahead, you know, where it's like, oh, you know, I sucks that we lost, but we'll get them next time. It's like they're in a crucial, hey, we need to keep winning games or we're not going to win this division. So you right. have that weight on your shoulders. At you the have... same time, you have to not like, you can't get too overstressed. It's like, hey, we are still in first. Calm the fuck down. Yeah. Like, the sky hasn't fallen out, isn't falling. We can still do this. You know what that doesn't help, though? Media. You know, you look at anything yeah. on ESPN, NFL Network, Twitter, uh, any, you know, like, Indianapolis radio shows, like, TV, like, you know, sports networks. Like, like the question is, what's going on with Andrew Luck? What And, you know, he's got to go home and deal with that. And like, well, There were some rumors that they've been hiding an injury yeah well and now they're under investigation get for fined it. Over this. right right and that yeah, that is a so. big thing i and, honestly think it might be true I, because he does seem all but that doesn't explain the mental blockage as he said it explains some of his bad throws as far as like just inaccurate yeah yeah but, uh, i mean i guess it could explain a mental problem to an extent because if every time you throw the ball you're thinking oh shit this hurts <laughs> you might just make a poor decision because you're not wanting to take a hit because right. he does get hit a lot you know and you might just be thinking you know i'm just i'm just trying to do something and then playing from behind of course breeze had this problem especially last year where the saints were always playing from behind and he had a lot of interceptions because he's just trying to make something happen yeah and so as soon as you get behind uh you're usually going to see an increase in interceptions from a quarterback because if they feel like they're the game's on their shoulders they're going to end up making bad decisions sometimes. Yeah. So that's just how it is. Cam Newton on the flip side, he's such a <laughs> – his skill set's so weird, man. Uh, it truly is. He's like a – because we've had scramblers and runners before, but Cam Newton isn't a scrambler. The only quarterback that had the same skill set running-wise as him was Tim Tebow. Like, they're like power runners that are quarterbacks. Yeah, Cam you know, Newton's like what six six and like two hundred forty pounds or something like that. Like he's he's not just yeah. a little guy running. I mean, when he runs, like he's gonna trample you <laughs> if you're not looking out. Right. I mean, they talked about it a lot during the game too. Like I've never seen a quarterback like put his shoulder and put his shoulder down and like push a yard forward. But I do think that is a dangerous style to play. Like yes, they need to. I get it was raining, so maybe they were lying a little bit more than usual. But at a certain point, he's going to get hurt doing that. And that's, you know, he signed a $100 million contract. And that's just a risky. Of course, that got hammered in. That's like not, it's not like I'm making a bold statement here that they need to get away from that. But I mean, it really is true. That's like such a risky maneuver to keep having him run like that. I think they can get away with it a little bit while he's younger. But they're definitely going to have to get away from it in the years to come. Yeah, you know? I mean, look at what happened to Michael Vick towards right. later in his career. You know, and he it, wasn't even taking the hits that Cam Newton's taking. Right, exactly. And it, it unfortunately happened to him. I will say, though, with Cam Newton, I agree with that. Quite it. frankly, he had, Michael Vick also had a few years to recover in jail, and he still got. Well, I, I wasn't gonna so, even you know, get. I was just, I was just trying to talk about his playability, know, not I'm even his saying, personal though, life. He even, I'm, no, I'm just saying though, he had a few years away from the game where he wasn't even taking damage and came back, and it was still obvious that, like, he went downhill pretty quick after he came back from taking his licks. Yeah. Even with like years off in recovery, and so like you have to wonder how much longer Cam Newton is gonna be able to do take these hits like that. True. Although the difference with Cam Newton is that he's still a good pocket passer. This, sure. like, th he's almost comparable to what Riss Russell Wilson can do. Of When he runs, it's not like, hey, I'm running just to make a play. He runs because he sees the opening and he's smart about it. 
Right. And right. if he wants to, you know, dive in on those goal line things, like, yeah, he's still in that good age gap where he can do it. But I agree with you. It's risky. It's going to get risky every year, you know, or the risk assessment is going to be larger every year because of it. But at the same time, he is smart. He's very smart. And uh, he's probably one of the more unique quarterbacks to watch, especially this year. I mean, he's always had these capabilities, but it's been the most interesting this year because he's finally like really grown and developed into what's extremely comfortable for him. And hey, right. it's working. You know, clearly it it's working. They're winning. They're undefeated. Right. So. Uh, you know what? I I think that pretty much is going to cover. Uh, everything unless you have anything else to add. i think we're kind of running over time here yeah a little bit and uh we'll talk about it in the packer video i want to touch on the upcoming match a little bit but we'll we'll hit that in the packer video oh, the packer videos could, could go a fucking half hour when i'm <laughs> done with it anyways uh you know if you have more to add on to this please leave us a comment you can still follow us on twitter and on facebook the links are in the description at cajun and cheesehead uh and there you go. Uh, let's you know continue to see where Carolina goes uh, next week versus the Packers now. So see if they get that undefeated streak going. Let's hope not. <laughs>